This is Isaac. He's six months old. This is after I've seen him for a few lessons. Uh, he had a meningitis at a month old that they believe he got at the hospital, and then they discovered a hydrocephalus at two and a half months old, and they put a shunt in his brain. You can see here he doesn't know how to roll over, and when he does, he doesn't know how to lift his head off. You can see that he, has, he had torticollis with the top of the head going over to his right, and couldn't roll over. When I saw him first, his hands were fisted all the time. Here, he starts opening them a little bit. He actually started opening them after the very first lesson. And look here, he is already able to roll on the belly and bring the head up. And Isaac was learning very fast, but the torticollis took a little while to um, clear. And as you can see, very quickly, Isaac began reaching out for objects, and, but the hands are still spastic, the fingers are still spastic, and you can... Isaac was gone for two months because the shunt failed, so here I see him again after the surgery, and uh, you can see that it's easier for him to follow an object uh, uh, to one side, and I'm giving him time to try and reach over to the left, and then once it's established in his brain, it's more likely he will do it to the other side, which to the right, which is the less likely side for him to turn his head, and you can see he dropped it. I continue working with Isaac. Here's his uh, twin sister, and look that they're not that different from one another anymore in the way they roll over. So Isaac was starting to catch up. The mother was told not to expect him to do well, and look how his hands are more open, his ability to sit and move the head in space gets uh, very clear, the wrists are free, and here I'm doing some work on his lower back and he starts crawling, which he was starting to do uh, that week or the week before, but getting up is still very precarious. Again, the mother was told by the neurologist that he will never walk or he will have a bad posture and never walk well and be very spastic. And as you can see, everything I do is really trying to get Isaac's brain to recognize what he needs to do in order to execute his intentions. And here, it's much easier for him to get up. Really, every lesson, there was very, very clear progress. But here we're looking at Isaac a, a year later, so it didn't all happen in one day, but everything he learned to do, he did so well, and of course the boy is so intelligent, he's playing. He's not talking here yet, so that was another thing the mother was told, that he might never speak. So it was very traumatizing for her, because she kept hearing what he will not do. My contention all along was, since he can learn to do each single thing so well, he has a nervous system that's capable of organizing action in such exquisite quality, it's only a question of time. Here he walks independently for the very, very first time in his life at the end of a lesson. Most people, if they didn't know that anything was the matter with Isaac and didn't know his age, would think that he's a perfectly healthy, normal child, which he is. The only thing is, he took a little longer to develop given his traumas. Without this work, he could have very well ended up having the limitations or many of the limitations that he were, was predicted to have. Ma many were concerned that Isaac will never talk. Again, he got to talking much later. Oh, you're so strong. <laughs> and it's too so heavy. It's too heavy? Can you drag it? Can you pull, move it on the floor? That's right. Good for you. You see how strong you are? You don't have to pick it up. You can drag Obviously, it. Obviously, he can talk, but also he's incredibly intelligent. and. If you just watch how he's going to figure out how to push the chair forward, you can see that this child really knows what he's doing, and he's going to have a very bright future. Today's limitations are nothing if he continues doing the work.